Many farmers are starting to become concerned about fodder availability, grass availability and indeed cow metabolic issues and so on. I think the best place to start looking at that issue from is what our normal feeding recommendations would be. And I suppose if you use the just the Chagisk normal recommendations for concentrate supplementation at 75 DMD for 27 litres of milk that would normally be a, a feeding rate of 6.5 kgs. But more farmers will have a DMD of around 70, and that's an additional kilo, 7.5. And if you're back at 65 DMD, that's probably an 8.5 recommendation rate. And that's standard practice as such. Where we are today, a lot of farmers find they either had to move to poorer quality silage. And what's very evident uh, from their milk supply pattern and composition, milk protein has fallen, and that means the cow is running out of reserves. In fact, I normally compare it to the bank link machine, you can really only take out what you put in, and really when they run out of reserves, protein starts to crash and so on. The, the major concern from here forward is what impact that will have on fertility and so on. So really the big issue is how we bridge feed gaps. At a very simple level, I think the first step that everybody has to do is measure how much material they have today, and how they would budget that on an equal basis right out into probably three weeks from now, possibly even a month depending on your own soil conditions and indeed your cow type. And the best thing to do is to budget that on an equal basis per cow per day right out to there and supplement to balance accordingly. So now we'll look at maybe some of the options that we are uh, faced with there. And I'd say, first of all, the reason why we need to do that is, first of all, is, is really to support the milk solid piece. That reflects the cow's energy status, and that energy status will in turn result in what our submission rates will be when we start the breeding program. Now, generally speaking, the objective is to keep body weight condition loss post calving below a quarter of a kilo. And where we can, can actually do that successfully, we generally end up with a submission rate in the first three weeks of around 90%. If it's between a quarter and a half a kilo, that submission rate in the first three weeks falls to about 70%, and where it, uh, the loss, body weight condition loss, is above a half a condition score, our submission rate can fall to 40%. So they're the kind of issues we want to avoid, and we want to make decisions today that we'll be rewarding ourselves for later on, if you like, and be, be happy that we made them. So if we're short of silage, and let's, for argument's sake, say, um, taking what grass we have available as well into that budget and I think it'll be several weeks yet before looking at the forecast before we're comfortable with the grass growth curve I think let's say we're short 15 kilos of silage today I think our first option with labour deficient on many farms is simply to increase feeding rates by 3 kgs uh, that would replace 15 kilograms of silage per day on the other hand, if we don't have grass available, we might have to find additional solutions, which could in include a midday feed at the barrier, or including a product like beet pulp, citrus pulp, or indeed hulls in the middle of the day as another alternative. Again, work on the simple basis that one kg will replace five kgs of silage, and that will help to bridge that gap as such. I think if you're doing simple sums, what we really need to work out is at 26 or 7 litres, our objective is to get 18 to 19 kilograms of dry matter into that cow. So that must be the total sum. So add our kilos of silage dry matter available to what grass we have outside. So if we can only get a half a day's grazing in, we're not going to get any much more than about four kilograms of dry matter. So that'll obviously stay, replace about 20 kilos of silage as well uh, in, in the yard. Uh, but only if we have that, can we get it in. So, you know, measure what we have, and again allocate accordingly and subtract it from the total requirement. Um, but that would probably have our available our silage need in the yard as such and help us to stretch it, provided we were up at maybe six kgs of concentrate in the parlour and three outside in the middle of the day. In terms of what we can could use to supplement then, you're really looking at, you know, keep the alternative simple. One is to increase it in the parlour, one is to put some outside. And if we're up at three outside plus six or seven in the parlour, more than 50% of our total dry matter intake will be coming from concentrate feed. When we're in that space, we need to include some bit of long fibre in the diet, like straw or whatever. So as a general rule of thumb, we want to have at least 50% of the dry matter coming from forage. 
When it falls below that to 40, we want around one kilo straw. If it falls below 40, we need to probably go to two. And I, the general rule of thumb I use is one kilo straw for every 10% we're less than half and half in the total diet.